So it's your first, uh, first game in an opponent's building. Um, is that, is that, you know, do you expect it to have any kind of an impact, positive, negative, good to get away? What? You know, I, I think that it always has an impact. Um, um, it's one of the reasons that I was glad that, that we went to Villanova and scrimmaged. Um, obviously, we're in somebody else's building. It's a little different because there's not any fans or anything. So that obviously creates a, one, one thing that's different. But, but we, we were able to get ourselves out of our own environment and play somebody else in their environment. And, and so uh, one of the reasons that you do something like that, and, and certainly um, one of my primary motives behind, behind that decision. And, and so, um, but I, I certainly think that playing on the road is, is different. Um, maybe we've eased into it a little bit because um, we went to New York City and, and had two good games there. And, and, and so, uh, but we, we know that this will be a challenge and, and um, uh, no pun intended. Um, and, and that we'll, we'll have our hands full with, with uh, a very good Maryland team and, and uh, a, a team that seems to be doing a lot of things right, right now. What's been the focus, the focus the last couple of days? Um, you know, probably just improvement, progress. We're, we're trying to get more consistent, um, better from start to finish. Um, you know, we struggle even in practice sometimes with, with sustaining throughout. And, and, um, um, and I, I think that shows up in, in our play in games. And, and as coaches, we've, we've really addressed it and, and talked about it with the guys. And, and um, uh, so we, we just need to keep our fight going towards getting to be as close to a, a good team for 40 minutes as, as we can. We've been a, you know, a pretty good maybe a really good team for 15, 20, 25, maybe even 30 minutes in, in some games. Um, but we, we're still in the, in the fight to get as close to 40 as we can. How much of what Maryland does offensively goes through uh, like Alex and Trimble? Um, just about all of it, um, and <laughs> justifiably so. He's um, terrific with the ball in his hands. and. Uh, a, a terrific downhill player, and and um, um, you know, seeing some of the things that he's done in some of their games, and I've watched several of them now. Um, he he has a knack for for when it's winning time, when when the game's in the balance. He he um, he understands how to assert himself in in the most productive ways, and. Um, so um, that's certainly challenge number one when you're when you're setting up your defensive game plan is is how in the heck to to try to corral him and and keep him off the foul line and and do things that that uh, uh, obviously would be in our best interest if if we're going to win the game. Facing someone like you as a coach, are you almost more inclined to go with the zone, look, especially given some of the success you guys have had with him? Well, I, I would say that. Our approach defensively has been, um, let's throw some some different things out there and see if if um, if something works tonight better than something else. And and so, um, I don't think we'll we'll treat tomorrow night any differently. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been so good in one defense yet that we've thrown it out there and it's been so good that from start to finish in the game we've we've stayed with it um, not that that's necessarily my desire but it would be nice to have all of our defenses be good enough to to say okay this is the one we're going to play tonight and they'd be good enough to help you win but that's unfortunately not where we're at yet what's that balance like trying to improve both of those I mean I know you're a man-to-man -man guy but you also you know yeah our zone has to be good I mean we, we, we're we're <laughs> We we feel like we know that our zone needs to be good, and 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 um, um, I, I'm giving I'm giving other defenses more time in practice than than I, I maybe ever have as a coach, um, because I feel like our zone is going to have to be productive for us. Um, I know that it's not going to be 
great in every game, but there are going to be games when it when it can be beneficial and can be helpful, and it has to be ready. We have to be ready to play it um, on those nights that it can help us win games. Was the SMU game kind of the indicator that maybe this could be you know kind of one of the answers here? Um, you know, at the end of the at, at the end of the first half in the SMU game, it was it was very good to us. Um, uh, now they came out and made some adjustments in the second half and had a little more success against it, but um, but I think that there are just teams that that um, are better against man to man, and some teams are are you know naturally really good against zones, and so um, on those nights where you you find a team that doesn't maybe isn't as comfortable against a zone, then then you play it a little bit more, and. Um, uh, but again, we're prepared to play it because um, unlike many of my recent teams, I, I can't remember the last time that, that we, we practice zone defense every day, but we, we practice zone defense every day now. So we're, we'll be prepared to play it. Just having a couple options that maybe your team isn't like significantly better at one than the other actually have an advantage when it comes to game planning? Yes. Because you'll see on film, well, these guys aren't very good at zone, but if maybe if you know that, well, my team isn't very good at zone, then you would be hesitant to make that change. No, no question. And, and, or if you hadn't practiced it very much, you know, then, then, you're, then you're in a mindset of, well, we're just hoping now. And, and um, but about, I, I don't know exactly when it was, but it, I'm going to say 10 days, two weeks ago, so somewhere in that, in that timeline, I, I told our staff that we're, we're going to have to have a secondary defense that, that we can rely on, not one that we're, we're playing and hoping. And, and so that's why we've um, utilized the zone. We, we actually uh, have a team, the guys that we play the most uh, are, are very capable in, in the zone that we play because we have some length, but yet our, our big guys are mobile, and, and so they can get out and cover out on the perimeter when, when you know, the need arises. And, and so, um, uh, again, it's, not, it's probably never going to be a, a situation where it's uh, great to us every night, but, but it's, it's going to have to be good to us most nights. It's tied to it, it's it, I, I would say it's tied to team need, <laughs> to, to, to to what our team needs. We we, we need, uh, you know. The other thing is is because um, we're probably not as deep yet as we as we want to be. Um, we we probably need the zone in in order to preserve preserve us if we if we have any foul issues. So in in anticipation of of. Um, I don't want to call it lack of depth, but lack of our, our depth being developed yet, um, then we just we have to be um, we have to be ready to, to do some, some other things. We have some deficiencies um, as it pertains to defensive play. And um, and We've talked about some of them in here. Some of them we haven't talked about. But, um, but my job is to put our guys in the in the positions, obviously, to be the most successful that they can be, and 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 also to protect them from situations that uh, are going to be difficult for them. And and so, um, without a ton of rim protection, then we we have to do. We have to do some things differently than maybe I would like to, but we don't we don't have big shot blockers. We, that's just not what we're blessed with, and and um, we're we're not uh, for that matter we're not blessed with a ton of backcourt speed and quickness. We got good size, okay, but we're not real real overly fast. Maryland's fast and quick, and and so we have to build our defense around. The capabilities of, of the guys that we have, and and again try to accentuate what our strengths are because we have some, and and stay away from where our deficiencies lie. Maryland's a team that's shown the ability to pull out close games. They have two one-point wins already this year, and overtime went over Richmond, and you guys have pulled out a couple of close ones as well. So is that kind of
kind of game you foresee happening here? And what do you think would be the key to which team is able to come out on top? You know, um, I guess I would anticipate a close game. I think you always expect a game to be close, honestly. Um, or at least I do. I, I expect most games to be to be close, not all of them, but some, most. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think when, when for us, when it gets to winning time, then that's when, that's when it's most crucial that Mike and Jamel demonstrate their, their senior leadership and, and, um, uh, and I, I think defensively, it's can we somehow get the ball out of Mellow Trimble's hands enough to make somebody else beat us? You know, I, I would like to think if we get into that situation tomorrow night that we'll figure out some way or we'll, we're going to try to find a way to make somebody else beat us. And, and um, because he's the common denominator behind all those close victories. He's the guy that makes makes the plays. And, and um, uh, but that's a lot easier said than done. I, I'm, not, I'm not the first coach that realized that it would be better to have somebody else beat them than him, and, and he still manages to do it. So um, whether or not we could accomplish that, you know, do we go zone at the end of a game? Um, something to where, you know, he doesn't lay the ball in our basket because that's what he's really good at. You and the Mark Turgeon coached together in the Kansas for, for uh, several years. Now, what do you remember about Mark then and, you know, and about those years together? Mark was just getting started in the coaching business then, and, and – um, uh, he and I had a ton of, of fun together. Um, we still have stories that we, we laugh about. And, and um, uh, we were actually um, in a tournament with them a, a few years ago, and, and we saw each other in the airport. Uh, we didn't play them, but we saw each other in the airport uh, on the way leaving the tournament. And, and he spent some time with, with my kids. and. And, and that's the first time they had really met him and talked to him a lot. And, and they still talk about, you know, how funny he was and how funny the stories were. I mean, we just we shared a lot of things. Four years we spent together, and our, uh, our offices were right beside each other. And, and uh, so we had some great success there, obviously, under, under Roy. And, and, and so, um, you know, Mark's just been a good friend for a long time. He's a, he's a great coach. You knew he was going to be a great coach when he was whatever he was, 25 or 26, when I worked with him and, and started working with him. And um, uh, maybe he was even younger than that. He might have been 23 or 4. But, uh, but anyway, um, his success has certainly not been at any a, a surprise to me at all. And, and um, great family, um, just a, 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 real, a real good guy. And, and, uh, but we, we had... Uh, we just had a lot of fun. That's that's, that's the be best word I can think of. We learned a lot, but we just we had a lot of fun together. And and again, like any any staff that spends four years together, um, we we could tell you crazy stories about it. Are there any of those stories you could share? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> those aren't the kind. Not not the ones that I'm thinking of anyway. So, um, uh, well, I, I do remember there was one. Uh, first road trip we're getting ready to take, uh, uh, as, I, as I recall, we're going down to play the University of Miami our first year there. We're going to Florida. And um, we had to leave the, leave the gym at, at like 5.30 in the morning. So, you know, Roy's a stickler for time. And, and, uh, and I, uh, I get there and, you know, 5.15. No turge, 520. No turge. Now, turge lived like, gosh, two minutes from Allen Fieldhouse. Three, maybe, if, if, if he didn't get the light. And um, it's getting pretty close. And I, I thought, man, I better call him. So I call, call his phone. <laughs> I said, Turge, where are you? And he. <laughs> I can't say exactly what he said, but he said, oh, what time is it? It's like 5.20, almost 5.25, Turge. Oh, crap. 
I don't know, just tell Coach Williams something. He said, I'll meet you guys at the airport. <laughs> and so he, uh, I, I just told Coach, I said, hey, Mark's, Mark's been detained. I said, he's going to just meet us at the airport. <laughs> and uh, so he showed up at the airport and made it, made it on time for the plane. And, uh, but that was just, uh, that was a, a small one of, 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 of many that, that, we, that we, we had there. And, and uh, but he, he was, like I said, he was just a guy that you could tell really knew what he was doing and, and was really good. So we, we had a lot, of, a lot of good times together. He did cause me to tear my hamstring one night. That's another story that, 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 that no, it, this is a longer story, but um, I'll try to be as brief as I can. So the first thing that we did each year with Coach Williams was when the guys came back, was he'd have a 12 minute run. And basically, guys would just run as far as they could in 12 minutes and want to see what kind of shape they were in. And so this one particular year, it, it must have been 95 with 100% humidity in Lawrence, Kansas that day. And, and so coach is talking to the team. And, um, um, and I can, I'm looking at Turge, and he's in the back of the, he's in the, back of the huddle. And... And he starts inching backwards as coaches finish, and it's because the coaches would all spread out around the track. Well, I finally figured out there was one corner that had some shade to it, and it was the corner that he was backing out to because he wanted to go get in the shade and make the rest of us stand in all, in all the heat. So I saw what he was doing. So coach finished talking to the team. He said, all right, let's go. So Turge turns around and starts walking for his corner. So I snuck, I tried to sneak up behind him, and as I got to him, I started running. And which he was way faster than me, but and way and younger too. But, but, about six or seven steps in, I blow out my hamstring. Blow it. I'm, I'm not talking about tweaked it. The next morning, I was purple from the top of my hamstring down to just above my Achilles tendon. Purple all the way down. Well, of course, when that happens. I start slowing down and trying to, I mean, I'm, I'm about to crash down to the ground because I'm, I'm, I can barely stay upright. He thinks I'm joking. He thinks I'm lying because I'm trying to trick him so I can beat him down to the corner. And he came to, came to learn that I was, I was telling the truth. So anyway, that was, uh, that was probably the worst thing he ever did to me. He caused me to blow out my hamstring trying to get down to beat him to that shade. And, uh, and he got the shade, and I got the busted hamstring. So... <laughs> Anyway, that's was a, it was a bad, that's not a great story unless you were there because they still laugh about it. Roy and Steve and and Turge, anytime we get together, they, that that's one of the things that it's pretty sure to come up. I remember when Kevin blew out his hamstring. So, um, Curtis, can you give us your scouting report of Maryland? Just a general. Yeah, um, really good off the bounce. Um, again, Trimble is is a guy that makes everybody else better. Uh, he's great in the clutch moments of the game. And um, um, they have some freshmen playing extremely well for them. Cowan and Herter and, and Jackson, um, their bigs all come in and, and really play the role well. And, and uh, uh, so they're deep. Uh, they can shoot. I think they're a little better shooting team and their numbers would would indicate right now, excellent passing team, and, um, uh, and and their numbers are really good defensively. So, um, you know, the boards will be a big key. Uh, they're, they're a good offensive rebounding team. That will be a big key for us. Um, our ability to set our defense and get back in transition will, will, be, will be a big thing for us as well. So... Um, then on the offensive end, we just have to try to utilize our advantages uh, where we can. Kevin, before the season, this was pretty much circled as basically the most marquee non-conference matchup on the pit schedule. And I know you're careful not to look too far ahead to it before the year. But now that it's here, can you speak just about how crucial the win in this game would be? Well, it would be, you know, it's like I told our team, there, there are some games that are uh, more valuable than other games in terms of if you're able to win them. And, and this would be one that would certainly qualify as, as a more valuable than, than, than some of the others because A, it's a road game. B, it's a, it's a, a Big Ten team um, that's a good Big Ten team. And, and so, um, uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would think that in the eyes of the committee when that day comes that, that this, 
this has a chance to look like a uh, a good one if you if you're able to get it. So, um, and it's just it is what it is. I mean, it, this game is going to have more value uh, than than winning the last game that we won, and and um, and rightfully so. So, uh, hopefully. Our guys will go and play with with the the urgency and the and the tenacity that you need to play with on the road, um, and, um, and and react to a, what will be a difficult environment, but react and, and play like like seniors are, are supposed to play. Kevin, you said before the season you thought these guys were approachable, and uh, there's been a couple times after a win you came in here and said, "Hey, we won." I wasn't. There was, there's still things we need to do better. How have you seen that play out over this last? Yeah, you know, um, a couple of you guys said I was miffed. I I, I wasn't miffed. I, I was just I, we just simply lacked the killer instinct. I, I, I'm not mad about it. We just we just don't have it yet, and or we haven't demonstrated. I'm not saying we don't have it. We just haven't demonstrated it. And and um, um, but I, I think that. Um, uh, You know, I'll put, I'll put it this way. Our success, our continued success, will depend largely on our coachability. And, and you know, it's easy to be coachable in the summer and in the fall, okay? And it gets a little bit more difficult to be coachable when the games start because now that some adversity sets in and, and things aren't easy anymore and, and – um, or maybe you're not playing as much as you want to, or maybe you didn't get as many shots that night as you thought you should have, or whatever, you know, all that disease of me stuff that gets that get infiltrates teams. And and so um, hopefully um, um, hopefully they'll continue to be coachable. Hopefully they'll be a little bit more coachable maybe than they've been in some ways. Um, and and um, my, my job is obviously to, to reach them in a way that they receive our coaching um, properly. And, and um, uh, I, I never want them to take it personally. I, I want them to take it as we're, we're trying to help them. I, I'm just merely a tool to help them. Uh, that's, that's all I am. I, I'm just a, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm like a support guy. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to help them achieve what they want to achieve. It's not about me. It's never going to be about me. It's about them and their success, and 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 be and their team. And um, I'm merely trying to do the best job I can to help them. And one of the not difficulties, but one of the things, one of the biggest challenges you face as a first year coach, is getting those guys to believe that that's really what it's about. That I I really, it's about them. And I'm here to help them, and and um, um, because some guys will warm up warm up to that more quickly or more slowly than others.